have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Well, it's a mess in here, but that's okay. I'm going to show you guys the new section of the laboratory. Do, 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 do. Here it is. Lights. Ah. So, this is just a brief view quickly of the new section of the shop. It's not new, actually. We're just repurposing it. And uh, it's going to be... We've already painted in here, but this is going to be a lab section of the shop. So I've got the hood here, table that that goes on, I've got an oven, I've got a glove box, cabinets for chemicals. Uh, this cabinet is going to be probably for um, uh, other types of uh, goodies. I'm going to put another table over here and a few other things. So I just wanted to kind of briefly give you guys an overview of what it looks like right now. And I'll give you a tour when it's all done. Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwresearch.com and quantumgravityresearch.org. So, you're in the lab again. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of update on what we're doing here in the lab at Quantum Gravity Research. So there might be some new things in here that you haven't seen before and I'm not sure what you've seen what you haven't. I haven't filmed too much in here I guess. There's a new oven in here. Um, that is a muffle furnace for some uh, different things we want to do here. And maybe a few small pieces of equipment but in general I'm making this video to give you an update of what we're doing in the lab as far as equipment is concerned. So at the moment we're going to be building a schlenk line. So I'm going to show you what the particular glass manifold looks like. Okay, this is this is um, the beginning portions of a schlenk line. This is the the gas manifold. The vac is on one side, and the inert gas is on the other side. And then these valves here um, go from one to the other and switch back and forth. So. Um, I briefly want to run you through a few things that we've tried around here and then the reason that we're running to uh, go, going to a Schlenk line. We have this glove box you see right here. This glove box is not the best glove box for super high inert conditions and really clean atmospheres as far as low oxygen content and stuff. We want to be way down into like the PPM range, okay? So the only way to really get around that is to build a schlank line. So what a schlank line is, is you vacuum the entire system and you put an inert gas in there that's been processed and the whole, the whole deal. Um, and then you also have a cold trap in here that you use liquid nitrogen with. And that whole entire thing is a way to get everything really, really inert and clean and really low PPM range. Most, um, the, most of the time you see these used in organic chemistry but also a lot of air sensitive techniques and um, synthesis and everything else. So um, an example of a, a, a reaction flask looks something like this. So this is a reaction flask with a, uh, with a valve, um, a vacuum valve on it. So this basically fits right on the bottom of that um, manifold and then you do your reactions in here. And there's all sorts of different uh, different pieces of glassware and things that you have to connect to the system to set it up. So this video is actually going to be about this system and setting it up. Um, but I wanted to tell you why and it's because we need a really inert atmosphere to synthesize some of the nanoparticles with uh, palladium that we're working with. Um, so that's again this is an update on just building this schlank line. So right now I wanted to show you what we have. We have some of these stainless steel rods here and these rods will be the back lattice. So these rods um, will be inside the lab hood. Now, originally, um, you normally put a schlank line in a lab hood. And in our case, we only have one lab hood. So it's, if we pack everything in here, it's going to be hard to do anything else in here. So we have to be careful with how much space we use. Now, I've also seen people hang schlank lines out on their bench, which would be like here. Um, I like the idea of hanging it out here because it frees up everything in the in the glove box here or in the uh, the lab hood here 
but if anything happens or if you're extracting gases and things are um, you know you want to bleed off systems and stuff you always have to plumb all that into the lab hood in order to to remove that and be in a safe condition um, and not let those um, things that could be hazardous into the normal atmosphere here in the room so um, that's that's an, that's an option but I think we're gonna go ahead and build it in here so I'll get you a little bit better close up and show you exactly what we're gonna do okay so not all the parts are here at the moment but uh, these are stainless steel um, rods and then we've got these joining connectors which are pretty cool these actually have thumb thumb um, screws on them and then the other kind are just a um, set screw if I can get one of these out oh, I'm not gonna worry about it and then also we have uh, our back pieces which we are gonna mount everything to so right now I'm gonna basically mount everything to this this back plate here this is for the fire system um, this hose if it gets punctured it'll um, set off the fire extinguisher here which is mounted on the side it's all in a pressure so we gotta I'll have to disable that while I work on this so I don't accidentally discharge it um, so basically I think I'm gonna mount some of the components here um, the bubbler that you see here is an oil bubbler um, that is designed to um, bubble your incoming gases through an oil so that you don't have to um, worry about um, some of the contaminants um, so I think I'm gonna mount that on the side and then we have the manifold here the manifold is going to be mounted um, on, on this position and then there are also what we have is the cold trap um, so you actually put this under a vacuum or well this side is under a vacuum and then and then right here you actually put a liquid nitrogen so when you cool things like that it literally traps the um, it traps the the gases such as oxygen in this trap so it's got a inlet and an outlet and a valve on top so anyway so this is connected to the uh, manifold and the whole system will be in here um, and then we have some lab jacks that we acquired and these jacks are designed so you can put your flask your reaction flask on here and get it to the right height for everything so anyway this is a brief overview introduction of where we're exactly at at the moment and when we get more of this assembled and together I will update you then all right guys so I was assembling this and I thought I'd show you some of the different fittings so it sounds echoey because I'm in a box so this right here is a cap for a number 15 and this is an o-ring style fitting so you put the o-ring on there and then you have a clamp like this which has a turned back and a clamp so you just put it on here take your clamp put it around there and then you just twist the knob and it pushes out against the two pieces which forces that o-ring together now on this type of fitting you don't use a grease now the other type of <clears throat> common fitting is a barbed fitting like this so here you're actually going to take a piece of hosing and plumb it to the next item you want to go to and the other side happens to have an o-ring fitting now some of the fittings are tapered fittings like this these you actually have to use a um, vacuum grease and you have to apply it here which we'll do later so just want to show you the few different ways um, that the common ways that you connect things here so carrying on
Alright, so I cut these little short one and a half inch pieces from one of the bigger rods and then went ahead and mapped and mounted all four of them in the back. So that's actually where everything's going to hang from. Now this back plate is slightly flexible. It's being held on by down here, here, and on the top there's a few bolts. So this is actually a backdraft uh, chamber to allow the air to go outside and be sucked in from the bottom. So I think this is plenty strong to hold the things we want to put on here. We're not going to put any crazy amount of weight on here. All the glassware is extremely light. So I think that'll work. So the hardware is pretty cool. It's basically these little guys. These are easier to see. These have just Allen wrench set screws in them. Um, but you can put a rod through this way and then a 90 degree angle this way. But you can also put it through the center. So here we can mount this right here and then attach a rod across the back from that one component. Now these have hand nuts on them instead of Allen wrenches and I'll be using um, some of these for certain places where we may want to move a rod around later and be able to easily do that. Alright, so here we are. We've managed to get, get the entire back grid in. We've got the manifold temporarily in place and I need to add one more piece here for the manifold to hold it in place. We've got our trap temporarily in place so I can get measurements. And now I'm working on the bubbler section and I think I'm actually going to use three of these. One for a back flow catch, one for a forward flow catch so we don't accidentally mess this up. Just precautions. So anyway, um, these lattice structures here you can just loosen these and then you can move them around. Right now they're aligned with each one of these just so we have them all in place. And then these also can be moved up and down by just unscrewing these guys. So for now it seems to work fine. Um, the only problem I have is this back plate sort of moves and it could potentially be a problem if you have everything affixed to a solid surface like this. You know, you don't want to have anything moving here if it's all fixed solidly. So, we'll see how that goes. I do have adapters to make this turned into a barbed fitting and then hosed fitting into any, any reaction chambers, but anyway, it's looking good. Alright, so here's our bubbler system. I actually have one more of these in line for a check both directions in case we get oil in our system. And what I've done currently is taken a plastic pipette and I've cut it and I've inserted it into here so I can put the oil in there without getting too much on the edge here. So I'm just going to be taking the oil out of there, the container right there, and using this as a funnel and trying to make sure everything stays not getting it all over this piece. So, see how that works. That's how that's done. Alrighty, so it's the end of the day. I've worked most of the day, yeah, maybe a half a day actually on this project. And we've got the bubblers in place here. Uh, this is just a extra trap in case stuff goes the wrong way. And that runs over here into this extra trap which is feeding the system. And it also will collect any extras in case the bubbler overflows or some high pressure comes and pushes it into the line. It won't get into the manifold. Instead, it'll be trapped here and here. And then also, uh, again temporarily, this is sitting here. I want to get a few more pieces and parts and I got some clamps on the way that should be able to hold this all in place. But the bubbler comes out and feeds into the inlet here. Now these valves, the way these valves work are pretty interesting. If you can see here, there's two holes in this valve. You can see actually straight through them. And the tip of here is painted blue. And it's kind of weird because this side shows blue because of the shape of this thing, which is kind of bad. But basically, and this paper is in here temporarily so these don't slam against each other. But basically, you have a double side here and a single side here. So depending on which way you 
turned this, okay, you either have the air coming from one end of the center, or you have one from the other side in the center. So one is vac, all right, in this case the back one is vacuum, and the front is the inert gas coming in. So you just turn this valve, now you have the system under vacuum, then you turn this valve back, and now you have the system under the inert gas. So it's, it's really simple. Um, it's a pretty nice manifold. Sometimes you have these totally separated and you have to do other things, but again, this one is um, its all built into the single manifold. Put caps on this side here. And yeah, the next step actually is when you're going to put valves in here, hook them up to gases, and uh, that'll be our normal common input to the system. So we can close the sash and do the experiments while the hoses are in there. Um, I will need to hook up the vacuum line to that right there. That will come down, and it will go out, and it will come down to this particular vacuum pump. This is just a roughing pump. So, there you go. There's today's work on the Schlenk line. Um, that's the basic setup, though. That's it. You got the back lattice, you got the bubbler, you got the vacuum trap, you got the outlets for the, uh, the ports. This particular one actually has um, these two 1420s and these 2440s and then I've got adapters that I can go from the little ones to a big one in case I want to uh, have everything the same at the bottom and I've also got adapters that I can put rubber hosing on so I can remotely uh, have the system set up instead of a rigid system alright peace out hope this was interesting my goal is to keep as much off the bottom of this as I can so when we get done here this will be clamped and I'll also have um, have something to hold the drawer, the doer, and not this jack. So the idea here is to have as much lab space as possible in the hood, but also have the Schlenk line ready to go when we want to use it. And when we get this thing up and operational, um, you'll get to see that too. All right, everybody. So there you go. That was the simple construction of the Schlenk line. It's pretty well ready to go, but a few minor things to do. But hope you like this video. In the future, there'll probably be more about this system as it's completed, but the basics are done. I'm going to post this video as is, as a little update, and we'll go from there. Peace out. Bye.